The beautiful city of Rancho Palos Verdes is known for its five-star resorts, lush golf courses, and some of the most expensive properties in the country. This affluent area is also a target for crime. I'm Maria Soreo. Is your home an easy target for crime? Police say that criminals usually wait for residents to leave the house before they break in. Most burglars can be in and out of your home in under five minutes. So what can you do to make your home less inviting for a criminal? Reporter John Glayton joins local law enforcement and takes us into two homes to find out if they're doing enough to prevent crime. We're here at one of the homes in uh, Rancho Palos Verdes, and I'm talking with Sergeant Shive. Sergeant Shive is a deputy sheriff at Nila Meter Station. And uh, Sergeant, tell me, what are some of the things you see? I happen to notice a camera right up there by the garage. Uh, I know your car is parked in the front, but when you think about houses, should a driveway have a car in it? I mean, what sort of impact does that have on a bad guy? Well, I think it uh, it has a big impact. I mean, the uh, the suspects do not want these uh, residents to be home when they come here. Um, they typically would start off, if there was a car in the driveway and they felt there was no one home, they're going to start at the front door and they're going to be banging on your front door and they're going to hope you're not going to answer. And Wait a minute, they actually bang on the front door? Yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely going to find out, are you home? And so they're going to go to the front door, and if you do answer the door or you yell through the door, then they're going to be moving on to another house. They'll, they'll probably make up something that they're looking for. Uh, you know, they'll make up a name. And uh, at that point, you should right away be suspicious and call the sheriff's department that uh, there's something going on. They're casing your house is what they're doing. You know, you, you should always be suspicious, even with somebody in a uh, gas company, the electric company, in some type of uniform. We recently had uh, somebody in a, uh, a uniform type of clothing that was uh, saying they were selling certain merchandise, and it turned out they were actually a suspect. Back to your original question as uh, we came up to this home, I noticed uh, not only the, the one camera there above the garage, I noticed a camera above the, uh, the gate to the east as one uh, by the front door. Um, the only thing I would add is I would like the cameras to have some type of a light that was blinking, maybe a red light, because we're not looking to hide the cameras. We want the suspect to see the camera and to think twice and uh, move on. We're talking with Lee, the owner of this fine house behind us. And Lee, I'd like you to tell us some of the things on your house that you've installed to make it more secure. Certainly. Shrubbery. You want to keep shrubbery away from the windows so that it's not covering windows so the bad guys can come behind the shrubbery, break into the glass, and make entry. There's other things that you want to do, like we have a security system placard out. We have a locking mailbox over here. We have a, a gate on both sides. We have tinted windows on the garage so you can't see in. And you can notice as we walk around a number of cameras throughout the house as well, both outside and inside. Just let me ask uh, Sergeant Shive, that's an interesting thing about tinted windows. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I think that's a great idea. I think if somebody is going to break in and they see a weak point and possibly the pedestrian door to your garage, but they cannot see in, chances are, just like your car, if they don't see anything valuable in sight, that they may move on. But I think what uh, he had mentioned about trimming them is a good idea so that they cannot inconspicuously slide in behind the shrubbery and then uh, make entry. We're standing in the doorway of Lee's house, and I understand there's some interesting things here. Could you point out what they are? Yes, before we go in, John, I thought I'd like to point out the infrared sensor here at the door so that if someone approaches the front door, it'll beep twice, zone two. And I have a number of units in the house. I can hear that throughout the house. I know if there's someone coming to my door. In addition, there's a camera up on the entryway, so anytime someone approaches the door, there uh, they get a video and I've sent videos and pictures to the sheriff department before of bad guys the knock knock burglars caught a couple of those I see the sheriff standing over there Sergeant Shive could we just ask you a question in view of what he just told us my first impression is that this might might be a bit of overkill what is your comment about that uh, no, I would not call it overkill. I would say that uh, Lee is uh, very conscientious. He is on top of this. And boy, if we could only get more uh, of our residents to uh, follow his lead. Sergeant Shive, we're standing inside the house now. And when you think about the bad guys, 
Well, what are some of the things that they look for uh, specifically when they try to break into a house? Well, they're looking to see um, French doors, sliding doors in the back is typically what they're doing. And they're, they're finding ways um, to quietly break the glass, and then reach in. Um, what I'm noticing here is he actually has um, a, a nice lock at the top. He has uh, the bar at the bottom of the French door. So I think it would be quite difficult just to uh, pry the lock. They would actually have to break the uh, glass. How often, that's an interesting thought, how often do the bad guys actually break the glass or do they try and stay away from breaking a glass because they know it's going to make a noise? Well. What we have found is they are breaking the glass quite often. And we're up here um, on the peninsula where you know your neighbor is not on top of you. I mean, the lots are quite large. And uh, they're finding um, that breaking the glass is not alerting their neighbors. When you think about breaking glass and taking it to its extreme, would you advise anyone to get glass that's very hard to break? Oh, absolutely. Tempered glass would be a wonderful idea. There's also some decorative material that they could put on the glass itself that if they did break the glass, they still would not be able to make entry. And is this the door that we're talking about? Is this usually the most often means of entry? Yeah, from my experience, it is. Sergeant, we're looking out at a very nice garden here, and that raises a question in my mind. Do the bad guys in your lengthy experience, and I understand you've been doing this for at least 30 years, do the bad guys usually come in the front, or do they sometimes come in the back? Almost always they come in the back. In the back. That, that is correct. And so we're always encouraging homeowners to pay strong attention to their gates uh, with security locks and anything they can put uh, on the gate so the person cannot climb over it. Since we're looking at the garden and we're standing here in the daytime, again, in your experience, do the bad guys come during the day or night? It seems like they're more daytime than they are actually at night. Really? Yes, because that way the people are at, you know, at their you know, jobs or they're out uh, shopping and the home is empty. We've talked a lot about the things that the bad guys do, and we've talked quite a bit about what uh, Lee is doing in his house, all of which are extraordinary, extraordinarily good. But that raises the question for someone that really doesn't have that much knowledge or information about what they can do, does the sheriff's department have any sort of handbook? I mean, how would you advise someone to say, gosh, I need to get my house home safety, but what do I do? How do I do it? Well, they can call me. They can call me directly. At, uh, my phone number is 310-891-3227. And I will actually go to their home and uh, we'll do what we call a home audit. And that's a completely free service of the Sheriff's Department? Yes, it is. Wow, what a wonderful, what a wonderful resource in uh, Rancho Palos Verdes. Okay, we're in a completely different location now, and we're talking to Penny, and considering that we're talking about home safety, what programs or systems in place do you have? Well, in addition to my ferocious little 17-pound dog, uh, we, we do have um, a contractual arrangement with Monotronics, uh, where we have uh, the home security system that includes um, uh, the burglary component of it, as well as a motion sensor. Now, Sergeant Shai, as we discussed, I think most people in probably, I don't know, Los Angeles have houses like this where it is not, you know, over the top. But it's interesting to hear her say, to hear Penny say that she had motion sensors. And again, if you just you know, refresh for our viewers, motion sensors apparently is a very, very key item. Oh, absolutely. And uh, that would hopefully trigger the alarm. And uh, then the alarm company will be calling us. On these type of alarms, I mean, we're out here within minutes. Within minutes? That is correct. And how closely does the Sheriff's Department tie in or relate to the kind of service that Penny has? Uh, very closely. I mean, the alarm company is going to have our direct line, and they're going to be calling right to our dispatch, who will then uh, quickly dispatch out a unit. And thinking about the house that Penny lives in, I guess the same sort of things exist here that we pointed out in the other house. I mean, as an example, this window right here, that is probably another key point of entry for the bad guys. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that would be one that, um, and I'll be talking to Penny about it to see what type of uh, lock she has there. And if there's anything else she can put on the uh, windows to make it um, less 
vulnerable for the, uh, for the suspects to break in. Um, when I think about that sort of situation, again, the front of her house doesn't have the vast array of cameras, and it, it makes me think that there's a probability that this may, may be more sort of burglar prone, but then I go back to what you said about having cars parked in the driveway and those sorts of things. I would suggest, even in the front windows, as we were walking up, I noticed there's some very low windows. And if we could put some cactuses, rose bushes, anything that would be uh, uh, deter a suspect from even trying to come in the front. So our audience understands this completely. You say low windows. Obviously, that means that the bad guys look at that and say, ho, ho, there's an easy way to get in. Yeah, that is true. And um, with Prop 47, I mean, we have uh, many more many more of these suspects out on the streets today. So anything she can do, and she mentioned she does have a dog, and we're gonna encourage her to get a larger one. <laughs> I think it's important for our audience to know, Sergeant Shive, you've mentioned several times, you know, call the Sheriff's Department. I'm sure there are people who are out there who say, oh, I don't know, I don't wanna bother the Sheriff's Department, but I think it's important that we impress upon our audience it is very important that you call the sheriff's department when you know you suspect a bad guy has come in. Absolutely, and uh, see something, say something. And we want them to have our number programmed into their phone. Um, as they pull up and they see something suspicious, we don't want them to wait till they get inside their home. We want them to call immediately. Given the nearness, and we're talking about Lomita Sheriff's Station, You've mentioned a very fast response. Obviously, you gentlemen only have a certain number of officers and a certain number of cars. Is it really a very fast response? It absolutely is. I mean, we have uh, cars that are specifically um, dispatched to this area at all times. So they're actually, they're not coming like firemen coming out of the station. They're already over here in this neighborhood. Neighbors looking out for each other continues to be one of the biggest deterrents when it comes to the criminal element. The Neighborhood Watch program was pioneered by the Los Angeles Police Department to educate community residents regarding their roles and responsibilities in the prevention of crime and to encourage them to take active measures to prevent crime. The program calls upon residents to step forward and assist the police in organizing the community into a cohesive unit working toward the goal of building a safer, crime-free neighborhood. In 1991, Rancho Palos Verdes resident Gail Lorenz teamed up with the Lamita Sheriff's Station to start a neighborhood watch program in RPV. Since then, neighborhood watch groups have formed in every area of the city with thousands of volunteer members. Here's a close-up look at the program and how neighbors make a difference. Neighborhood watch signs are posted all over Rancho Palos Verdes a sign that neighbors are looking after neighbors. We have lived in this neighborhood for 46 years, believe it or not, uh, and nothing was ever, we had no neighborhood watch until about, oh, I'd say 15 years ago. Neighborhood Watch is a national volunteer program and was organized in RPV 24 years ago to bring neighbors and law enforcement together to help prevent crime. Neighbors will help watch uh, if the newspapers have been picked up or, uh, you know, if, if they see something suspicious, they will, they will call. And uh, that's really basically the, the mission is to, if you see something, say something. Erica Barber has been Seaview's Neighborhood Watch Area Coordinator for more than 10 years. Area coordinators in the city work with block captains and assistants to inform neighbors by email and telephone about any criminal activity and emergencies. I think it's important for people to be aware of what is going on in the neighborhood because if you're not aware of what is happening, it's there's a natural tendency to let your guard down. We do have information about occurrences that happen within the neighborhood, but we also have other helpful information such as lost dogs, lost cats, or if there is traffic delay on one of the, the nearby streets or power outages, so on and so forth, we get information such as that as well. We have 270 homes 
and the participation for Neighborhood Watch is almost 100%. Well, basically what I do is I keep an eye on people that are moving into the neighborhood and people that move out of the neighborhood. And when we have someone that moves into the neighborhood, I go and I greet them and I say, hello, welcome to Seaview. I'm the block captain. And uh, in case you don't know, we have a neighborhood watch program here and this is what we do. Uh, we're neighbors watching out for one another. RPV's neighborhood watch program has received a national award and is supported by the sheriff's department and city. Residents are asked always to report all suspicious activity to the Sheriff's Department. I think people are, well, they're short of money. And I hate to say it, but uh, they are releasing the prisoners faster, and the prisoners get out of jail and, and don't have, a, they don't have a job, they don't have any money, so, you know, they decide to take somebody else's money. With the recent rise in burglaries, Neighborhood Watch organizers say it's important that neighbors look out for each other so that RPV remains as one of the safest communities to live in. We have had criminals caught because of neighbors that have seen something that have called the sheriff's department. Neighborhood watch groups like the one right here in Seaview are definitely making a difference in helping to keep our community safer and bringing neighbors together and reminding all of us, when you see something, say something. I'm Liz Brown Swanson reporting for RPV TV. Another effective way for residents to keep their neighborhood safe is to assist law enforcement in a more formal way. The group called Volunteers on Patrol are trained volunteers who drive through neighborhoods in white patrol cars looking for suspicious activities. They do everything from assisting residents with vacation checks on vacant homes to aiding deputies in a crime scene. In the next report, we meet up with some of these volunteers on patrol to demonstrate the important work they do. Seven days a week until 10 o'clock at night, volunteers on patrol cruise the peninsula in white marked cars. They're watching for criminal activity and helping law enforcement keep our community safe. We mainly are being out on patrol in the uniform and in the car that says sheriffs on it. We want to show a, an image that is sometimes hopefully a deterrent for crime. It is also helpful to people who may need assistance. So we're out there doing that. We do vacation checks on houses and people, the houses are vacant, they're gonna be gone for a while. We do that kind, we do traffic control on accidents. For years, the Lamita Sheriff Station has been recruiting citizens to join volunteers on patrol to assist deputies in the field. They are trained to perform non-hazardous duties, from checking on homes to issuing parking tickets. They are not armed, but have the tools to stay out of harm's way. Yeah, 10-4, uh, we got it. We don't have um, guns, we don't have weapons, but we have something, sometimes it's even better. We carry radios, so we can get people who do have weapons to uh, help us out right away. And that's exactly what we would do if we saw something that was suspicious. I have been uh, successful in, in observing people who are suspicious and who have turned out to be uh, of a suspicious nature and have been taken into custody. I have done that. Uh, that is a kind of a, an adrenaline rush. This RPV resident has volunteered for 17 years and his colleague joined five years ago. Every time they get behind the wheel, they know they are on an important mission and encourage more residents to get involved to prevent crime. I think it's very effective and helps us to keep control of our situation here and helps the police department, the sheriff's department of keeping track of what's going on around the area. There are eyes and ears. They're the ones that are out there. We don't want them contacting people unless it's just a friendly contact. Um, but they do have police radios, so they have full contact with us at all times. What kind of background, background do you need? What do people need to know if they are interested in doing this? Well, it's, it's really very simple. I mean, you need to be a, a U.S. citizen, uh, 18 or older, and we'll do a, a full background check. We'll actually live scan them, uh, which includes the full fingerprints, and we're checking their background. Law enforcement is something that I have always loved to do and I have experienced in the past. And I wanted to give back to my community. I think it's rewarding. I think if you have time on your hands uh, and retired, it's wonderful. And if you're younger and plan to pursue a uh, career in law enforcement, I tell you, it looks great on a resume. 
Now, if you are interested in becoming a member of the volunteers on patrol, you will need to stop by the Lomita Sheriff Station and fill out an application. Once you have been cleared and approved, then you will be trained and ready for action to be part of this fine team that is sworn to help serve and protect our community. I'm Liz Brown Swanson reporting for RPV TV. The Lomita Sheriff Station is seeking more residents to join volunteers on patrol. For more information, you can call the Sheriff Station at 310-539-1661. We'll be right back. Recently, there has been an increase of burglaries in our community. The Sheriff's Department and the Police Department are working hard to combat the problem and they would like you to get involved. If you see something, say something. If you see something out of the ordinary in your neighborhood, take pictures and call the police. Be on the lookout for unidentified vehicles or persons in your neighborhood and write down license plate numbers and vehicle descriptions so you can give accurate information to law enforcement. Get to know your neighbors and form a neighborhood watch. Let neighbors know when you're out of town so they can watch over your house. Remember to lock your doors even when you're home. Secure gates and backyard access at all times. Keep valuables out of sight and arm your home with an alarm. Never let strangers inside of your home. Request identification from people who claim they need to work on your house or say they're from the utilities company. If you see something, say something. Let's prevent crime together. For more information on crime prevention, go to the website, lamita.lasd.org. The Lamita Sheriff's Department recorded over 250 crimes in our community in the last six months. They range from home burglaries to vehicle theft. Due to the rise in crime, the city of RPV funded two additional deputies dedicated to the city. This would give Rancho Palos Verdes residents added protection and service. One of the officers assigned to cover RPV is Deputy Justin Smith. In our final story, Liz Brown Swanson joins Deputy Smith on a ride along. He talks here about crime prevention in our community. Inside the Lomita Sheriff Station, Deputy Justin Smith receives a briefing. He's been assigned to take me on a ride along. After a station tour, we gear up to hit the road for a night on patrol in Rancho Palos Verdes. On the car over here, we have uh, cameras and these are license plate readers. So if, uh, if we drive by a car that's wanted, if we drive by a car that's stolen, if we drive by a car that has a warrants on it, it will alert me. Um, it also uh, records all the cars that we drive by. So that not only helps, it, only, it not only helps in patrol, but also helps in uh, follow-up investigations. Deputy Smith patrols full-time in RPV. A rise in burglaries last year prompted RPV City Council to fund two patrol deputies exclusively for the city. So every day I go out thinking that uh, there's somebody that's up here that is looking to do something bad. And it's my job to try and find them. Every day there are four to five black and white patrol cars canvassing the three peninsula cities served by the Sheriff's Department. Having crime patrols dedicated to RPV gives residents added protection. Now uh, we can have two cars on, on one end of the hill. So if one car's busy doing something, there's another car that's available to, uh, to, res to uh, provide quicker response times, to provide uh, uh, more visibility. And I gotta tell you, the RPV car has made it a lot quicker. Deputy Smith has responded to hundreds of calls in RPV. He joined the Lomita station two years ago and has witnessed the shift in crime. I can tell you that the, the way that most of these burglaries occur if we're talking about residential burglaries, is um, they'll hop a fence and they'll smash a back window. It's usually how they occur. As for catching criminals, Deputy Smith relies on his training and also proactive residents who call in suspicious activity. It's made a lot of the residents more aware of who's in their neighborhood, who's walking around. And it's also, it's always important to call. A lot of my residential burglary arrests have been off calls. Hey, you know, a resident will call, hey, there's a person in this neighborhood that doesn't look like they belong. The challenge on patrol is being there. prepared yeah. to handle yes. any emergency and whatever danger lies ahead. 
it's our job to run through in our heads how we're going to handle specific situations. But uh, there's some that come up that you would never have imagined. And uh, it's my responsibility to figure it out. Right. Th that's, that's, that's a big challenge. I think uh, the, the loss of life when it doesn't need to be lost is, lost is difficult. Um, certainly dealing with stuff that's dealing with kids is, is difficult. After the sun goes okay. down on our ride along, activity picks up. The deputy spots a car with an expired registration. The driver has an outstanding warrant Come on over and is arrested. So what happened is I saw a vehicle that had expired registration on the car and I conducted a traffic stop. When I ran the driver through our system for wants or warrants, he came back with a warrant for his arrest. He was clearly very cooperative. Yes, he was all the, all the way through the process and I think he wanted to clear up uh, whatever cases he had. So, and that's what happened. There was definitely a lot of excitement and action tonight. We are back here now at the Lamita Sheriff Station where Deputy Smith will book the suspect that he arrested. And then after that, he's back out on patrol in RPV, helping to keep our community safe. Back to you, Maria, in the studio. We hope you've learned more about crime prevention in our city and how you can make a difference. Remember, if you see something, say something. Keep the phone number of your local police department in your cell phone. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Maria Sorreo.